Hey, everybody out there. So welcome to this very special chat with Daniel Winter. So Daniel Winter is from Board Game Feast, where, uh, well, he'll tell you all about it, but basically he makes really awesome meals and uh, snacks and stuff based on board games. So that's what we're going to dive into today. And we've got a, a few friends joining us for the chat. Hi, everybody. Okay, so Daniel, why don't you start us off with just telling us a bit about yourself and what Board Game Feast is? Oh, hi, everyone. Uh, so, I mean, it really started as something pretty casual as just a, a way to uh, make food for, for some of my friends coming around for game night, and it's uh, evolved from there. Uh, ideally, the... the the basic system is, is like I, I each month or so I choose a game um, and create a, a, a full multi-course spread <laughs> for it. So main course, sides, uh, usually some kind of dessert. Uh, it's, it's been a fun experiment to uh, mess with different cuisines and uh, try new techniques. And uh, yeah, it's a great way of combining my hobbies of board games and food. And how long have you been doing this for uh, a little over a year now. I actually started just after Chuck's 20, 2019. What is time now? 2019, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I met some great new local gamers at Chuck's there, and uh, we, we made plans to start uh, meeting in person. And it was partially a bribe to to get them to come to, to my place for games night because I'm a little bit just far enough out of the city that it's a little bit of an inconvenience. So this was just... Uh, Mm. cooking a meal is this an extra incentive to get people to come here and it's uh taken off from there yeah food is definitely a, a great bribe <laughs> if you want to get people to do something uh what kinds of ga uh what games have you done so far uh i mean I've, I've basically done one game a month skipping a couple during the uh, early pandemic but i've also been doing a few side projects as well so i've about 15 or so projects all in all uh so a, a couple have been official reviews uh and otherwise mm -hmm. just featuring old games my favorites uh that i that i like to feature mostly i, I like i love to tend to prefer games with heavy theme i mean both in, in playing games I've, I've always enjoyed theme as a uh, a, a big drawing point uh in immersion and adding food into that mix just yeah, another element of immersion to, uh, so uh <laughs> so sometimes it's like an edible version of the game and sometimes it's um, like a thematic accompaniment to the game. Yeah, I mean, the general principle I generally follow is the main course will be sort of in universe, uh, something you might find in, in, in the universe of that game. So uh, I, I did, um, I, the very first one was a, like a, a stroganoff, no, what was that stroganoff? Um, I can't remember the name of what you call it now. Uh, it was like an Eastern European stew uh, that I made mm. for Scythe. Um, that you okay. <laughs> might, might find from one of the factions in, in Scythe. Yep. Uh, and then as like the side or dessert, I might uh, get a bit, have a bit more fun and just like recreate some of the elements in cookie or cake form. Okay. Uh, talking about this is all well and good, but Daniel <laughs> has actually prepared a video of his most recent feast. So uh, let's watch that together and then if you have any questions following that, and, and Erlene, then you can. G'day. Welcome to the latest episode of Board Game Feast, where we'll be making a gingerbread dice tower for Wingspan. I've not had a chance to play this game yet, but I'm very excited for the new expansion featuring birds from Oceania, and specifically Australia, where I grew up. Since leaving Australia, I've really come to appreciate the enormous diversity of Australia's bird life. So much colour and unique bird goals. So we're going to start by creating our templates. You can use parchment paper or cardboard, anything that you can draw on and cut easily. It's of course easier to use a ruler for this, however you can just use the original dice tower as a stencil. If you're doing it this way, then just ignore the notches on the side. You won't be needing those since we'll be sticking it together with icing. Now I'm actually doubling the dimensions of the original dice tower, partly to account for the dice being able to get through with all the icing clogging it up on the inside, but also double the size means more gingerbread. 
You of course want the back and sides as separate templates, so we can uh, bake those separately. And remember to label each segment as you go. For those components going on the inside of the dice tower, you actually want to cut off a little bit of uh, length on each side to account for the thickness of the gingerbread itself. So for this gingerbread, we'll be using the recipe from Baking with Kim Joy. I love this one because it's versatile for both soft cookies and strong enough to construct with. Plus it has a very strong ginger flavour, which I love. I won't be sharing the exact recipe here because you should buy the book, but you can use any of the gingerbread recipe that you have handy. So this is actually a triple batch from the regular recipe. I didn't end up quite needing that much, although I did have a couple of breakages, so it's always handy to have uh, some backup in case you need to bake an extra uh, component or two. So first we're going to cream the butter and sugar with the molasses. You're going to start on a slow speed and then gradually increase to medium, stopping on occasion to scrape down the bottom and sides. And you just want to give this a few minutes until it reaches a nice creamy consistency. So now we can add our eggs and spices and then gradually add our flour. You want to use a splash guard of course unless you want a snowstorm in your kitchen. So now we can roll out our dough on a well floured surface. We want about a quarter inch thickness, though for the larger slabs, especially the sides, you want probably a little thicker than that, just so it can support the weight. I'm also rolling this out in multiple batches to have enough room to work with. You then want a sharp knife to cut out each of your templates. Now to create the wood grain effect on the gingerbread, I have this fondant stamp here. Now I realized after this batch that it's best to press this down on the entire slab of rolled gingerbread before cutting out the shapes, just so it doesn't distort the shapes when you press down on it. You want to press down firmly, but not too hard so that you don't end up with an uneven surface. You then want to chill these cookies in the fridge for half an hour before going into the oven at 170 degrees Celsius for 9 or 10 minutes. Now to highlight the effect of the wood grain, I tried making a sort of varnish with just a little bit of water, some brown food dye and a little bit of corn syrup just to thicken it up and give it a bit of a sheen. Those of you familiar with miniature painting, this is basically the same effect as a wash. Now for our royal icing, it's going to hold the whole thing together. We just need icing sugar and either egg whites or some meringue powder with a little bit of water. Now I'm using meringue powder here. You only need a few tablespoons of water and you only want to add one at a time until you get the right consistency. Now at this point we wanted a pretty thick consistency just enough water that it stops clumping up. You can always thin out the rest later for any flooding that you want to do with the decorating. Now we can start putting the whole thing together. We're obviously going to start from the bottom up. Now it can take a whole day for the icing to sit completely, so you want to allow yourself plenty of time. And preferably you want to give each section a couple of hours to at least partially set. Now of course you want to do a dry run with each piece just to make sure you don't need to trim anything off the sides. If it comes up a little short you can usually make up for that by just layering on some icing.
Now here's where I didn't follow my own advice and didn't think to check if the side panels fit correctly in here first. And here's where things got really tricky. Unfortunately my side panels weren't quite thick enough so uh, cracked a bit. But there's nothing you can't fix with a prodigious amount of icing. You may also have to MacGyver some clever ways to support the sides while you're waiting for them to set. Now I didn't get much footage from this final stage of construction with my hands covered in icing and all hands on deck just trying to hold it together. Now once you've given it plenty of time to set you can then use the rest of your icing with a bit of green food dye for some decorative flourishes. This is especially useful to cover up any cracks or defects you have in your construction. But you can also have some fun with various decorating tips to add some grass or mold or whatever you like. I used a dry sponge to create the mossy effect you see here. Thanks so much for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments, feedback in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions for other edible board game creations you'd like to see, I'd love to hear them. As always, don't forget to feed the meeple. Okay, well, I've got lots of questions. I'm just gonna start off with one. Uh -huh. What kind of bird was it that carried that coconut to your house? <laughs> well, you may, may have seen there's actually two kinds of swallows there. Uh, unfortunately, neither of them are European or African. <laughs> I, don't, okay. I don't have the European expansion. <laughs> so it must be from an upcoming expansion. Well, there, there is already the European expansion. Uh, I, don't, I just don't have that one yet. But could a European swallow carry a coconut? <laughs> well, that's the biggest question, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe they uh, carried it with, two, uh, with a piece of string carrying it to them. <laughs> That's possible too. Okay, so yeah, I'll open up the floor for questions from our viewers. So Erlene, uh, Lisa, and uh, Lisa's joined us now. Erlene, why don't you go first? What would you like to ask Daniel? Um, yeah. Um, do you have like other people helping you with some of these like baking things like members of your family? And um, how does that go? Uh, not Really, to be honest, um, I, my wife does help occasionally. Just um, like, when, like when I was trying to literally hold the, the gingerbread together, uh, but not so much with, with most of the design and cooking is uh, one hundred percent me. Uh, I, I am looking to getting my daughter to help out at some point, and she's only eighteen months old right now, so that's, it's some time yet. But uh, one day, I'm uh, looking forward to her being able to join me for some uh, baking adventures. Even all the camera work you do yourself. Basically, yeah. I mean, that, that's one of the hardest things. I mean, mm. I never really sought out turning this into content too much. It was just uh, for me and my friends. So I, I've gradually been rolling in new skills to add. So from teaching myself the cooking te techniques to the filming techniques to the video editing, uh, it's, all, it's all been a bit of a process trying mm. to learn so many things simultaneously. But uh, I think I'm making some progress. Yeah, both um, the birdhouse, dice tower and the video look great. Oh, thanks. A great job. I also like how big it was. It didn't look that huge when you were just doing the stencil, but once <laughs> it was finished, it was like, wow, that's a huge dice tower. <laughs> yeah, I mean, doubling each side means actually actually means four times mm -hmm. the surface and like eight times the volume. So it's right. plenty of space. <laughs> Become the four X game. Um, how tall was it after? Um, like what half half a meter or something? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that's like wow. So like taller than the box, the game box. Yeah, yep. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, and do you have any questions for Daniel?
Um, do you have a favorite feast or like a favorite accomplishment from any of the, the ones you've made? Uh, really, I mean, probably Everdell was one of my favorites. Uh, it's, it's such a, such a uh, thematic game with so much amazing art. It's very uh, evocative. So I uh, had plenty of plenty of theme to work with basically for inspiration. Uh, that was actually the first, my first time working with gingerbread specifically. I made the, the, the Everdell tree in gingerbread form, which was, which was quite fun. Um, mm. and, a, and a few other side pieces, like I made um, my homemade um, pretzel buns. I made, I made, it was all vegetarian, <laughs> obviously with, with the critter theme. Uh, so pretzel buns, uh, mushroom burgers, uh, red rock candy. I mean, rock candy is pretty useful for a few, uh, few games because there's so many games use like little crystal components. Uh, so I've been experimenting with my own rock candy. Uh, yeah. That, that one was was pretty fun. <laughs> if you want to see all of Daniel's feasts, um, you can check out his Instagram. Uh, you're also on Twitter and Facebook, I believe. Not so much on Facebook. Uh, uh, that's pretty pretty private. But I'm I'm pretty active on mm. Twitter and, and Instagram right now. And I also have uh, my own website uh, that I'm importing everything to gradually. Mm -hmm. What's that? What's the URL for that? It's just boardgamefeast.com, I believe. Okay. Uh, I've, I've got a, a little slide of the of my various handles, if that helps. Uh, are you able to show that? Yeah, let me bring that up. Sorry, okay. I missed it, you guys. I had intended to be here, and I was looking forward to it. I came right as you were saying, if you have any other ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Did you okay. see? Uh, I, I, I think you saw the, the last bit of the clip. Yeah, yeah, it just came in like there was a bird and yeah. <laughs> yeah so he made a, a gingerbread. Do you know what a dice tower is? It's like a tower that you throw the dice in and it rolls yeah. it for you. Yeah. Uh, he made that out of gingerbread and it's like he said half a meter tall because he scaled it up. <laughs> so oh, wow. Oh, was that the one you posted on the yeah, yeah, yeah. thing last night? Okay. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, I saw right. that in the game book. <laughs> and the video will be available on YouTube uh, later on. I, I can't share my screen, Nick. Okay, um, I'll just edit it in. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, Lisa, do you have any questions for Daniel? Uh, no, I was going to ask if we would be able to see it somehow. So <laughs> but it'll, it'll be on YouTube. You'll see it when this video goes up. And you can watch it <laughs> on YouTube and you can follow Daniel's uh, Instagram. That's awesome. Yeah. And you do about one of these a month, right? Yeah, I mean, it's been pretty inconsistent. Um, I took a break when the lockdown first hit, just because I obviously couldn't have friends over. And that was the whole appeal of it was, oh, uh, 10 minutes left, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the whole appeal of it was to, to have friends over. But uh, as, that, as that wore on and on, I decided to just go ahead with it anyway. And to have a, so I've just been doing it for my own uh, fun and working it into content. Uh, so the current plan is to have one feast a month. The, the, I do like a multi-course feast with multiple items and potentially a review uh, over, at the end of each month. And then say, say the middle of the month, say I go in every two weeks, I'll be doing a smaller feature with like a, a how-to, like basically what this Wingspan uh, video was. Okay. So two, two, two features a month, basically, I'm looking at. Okay. So this isn't even like a full meal. No, no. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's just dessert. Very large snack. <laughs> okay, and um, how do you tie in the reviews to the um, recipes? I mean, I'm very new to reviews. I've only done the one so far. I was very lucky um, that Flat Out Games uh, mm -hmm. was very supportive and sent me a copy of Cascadia uh, for a to, to preview. Uh, when it was kickstarted last year. Uh, so, I mean, the, the review is, is sort of distinct from from the feast side of things um and they said it to you to do a review or to yes. do well i mean to, <laughs> to basically to I, I offered to make a cake i somewhat jokingly offered to make a cake in okay. a review and then um decided to do a review anyway because it's uh, such a good game so you're starting to get free games from publishers um starting to i actually just this morning i've uh, got another one in the mail that I'll, will probably be my next project oh, nice. uh you can see here 100 tori 100 so, what uh, 100 tori i think like that's what birds it's in Japan. no it's like uh the japanese gates tori t-o-r-i-i -I. oh tori yeah okay so okay. uh look forward to that in the near future potentially <laughs> cool cool yeah i'll look forward to that as well uh, any more questions for Daniel? 
Um, what was the hardest one to make? Like the most challenging one for you? Good question. Um, the, the galaxy cake I made Mm -hmm. I, I did a double feature for Race for the Galaxy and Galaxy Trucker. Um, and that, the whole point of doing that theme was I just wanted to make a galaxy cake. Uh, and that one was quite tricky, trying to mix the different colors and the mirror glaze, which is quite tricky, like tempering chocolate, uh, getting to very specific temperatures. Uh, that was a, a multi-stage process. So that one was quite tricky. But again, it's all um, great learning new skills and, and practice. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just on your Instagram. You also make planets for this too, inside the cake? Yes, yeah, little mini- um, That's impressive. Mini, mini cake pops, I guess, basically, uh, that go with, like those are colored independently and then pouring cake batter around them that it's colored again. And then buttercream, it's colored separately on top of that. So it's, yeah, yeah <laughs> my just, hands were like covered in, in all- It turned out really rainbows. well. Yeah, it, that one's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just the amount of planning and preparation that Daniel puts into these is more than a lot of people put into their day job. A surprising amount of improvisation goes into, to be honest, than you think, but uh, it all comes together in the end. It, uh, you just make it look like it's all planned out. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, Anne or Lisa, do you have any other things you'd like to ask Daniel? Definitely check out those recipes that it already has up and he's got more coming. Uh, tell us a bit about the golden pie. Oh, um, yeah, my, my uh, wife, who's a uh, very talented animator, has uh, designed my logo that uh, has, has, has been quite popular. I've been using that as some, some branding and uh, looking potentially at some merch, but uh, I decided, I figured it would make good uh, <laughs> award uh, design. So I decided, I just wanted to showcase my uh, favorite games of the year, basically. I mean, obviously it's been a strange year for uh, being able to judge many games uh so it was only three that i featured but uh i just wanted to have a bit of an end of year ret retrospective on uh, my favorite games it wasn't too much incorporated into the food side of things <laughs> okay so it's more like the review side basically yeah like your favorite games of 2020 and um did you make feast based on all of them or just some of them yes yes they had all been featured uh, oceans i featured three times throughout the year that's my that was my favorite game and very uh, again very evocative uh theme there so i did a feast and uh i mean you experienced yourself i mm, it was a very tasty. version <laughs> yeah we actually played it <laughs> and uh, i did a cake for uh, uh the essen Spiel has a Brett Spiel cake uh, events now. So, and th this year, since everything was virtual, I was able to participate in that. Wait, 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 what? <laughs> they, have, <laughs> they have a cook off? Yeah, well, uh, in, apparently, it only started a couple of years ago. There's something called Brett Spiel, Brett Spiel cake, I believe, uh, that it's based on a charity where, I mean, originally in, 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 in person at Essen, people would take along cakes, some of them game themed, others just regular cakes, and then have like a little bake sale. Uh, where they, okay. everyone would sell their, their treats and all the money uh, went to charity. They raised like thousands of uh, euros last year. Wow. I, I, I'd, I'd not that. heard of it uh, until this year when it all went virtual and people were sharing their creations online. I could probably make hexagon cookies. That's <laughs> the extent of my abilities. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. Thanks for joining yeah, us, thank Daniel. You. And thanks for uh, everybody else for, for joining us in this chat. And um, we should do this again. This was uh, a really good chance I found to, you know, kind of get some behind the scenes uh, intrigue <laughs> on, <laughs> on how you actually made these. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a lot of fun. Okay, thanks everybody. All right, thank you. Take care. Bye. <laughs> hey, it's Nick here again. Hope you enjoyed this interview with Daniel. Uh, rather than just give you a list of his contacts, uh, let's take a look at his website here. So it's at boardgamefeast.com. Okay, uh, and then you can go to his Instagram, which is slash bgfeast. Okay, he's got some great stuff on here. Like I've seen it before, but it never ceases to amaze me. This is from uh, Agricola, which is like a farming game. So he's made all the animals and like your entire farm. Or, Candies. This is from Everdell. Galaxy Trucker. That's what we were talking about. This is one of my favorites. The Cthulhu giant pretzel. And this is the art that he mentioned that his wife did. Yeah, very 
lovely. Uh, boardgamefeast at gmail.com, so you can send them a direct message. On Instagram, at slash boardgamefeast. And on YouTube, it's slash all that stuff. Just search boardgamefeast. I haven't subscribed yet. At least I'm not on this account. Bye.